Many people think that because evolution is a fact, God does not exist and atheism wins. In this video, you will learn why this is complete nonsense. Hi, this is Lucas from Deflate, countering the skeptics' objections to Christianity. If you're new here, go ahead and click that subscribe button to get our upcoming videos. So, let's start with the basics. Charles Darwin. You know, the problem is, in my experience, that most atheists who keep bragging about the all-explaining powers of evolution haven't even read The Origin of Species, nor have they ever investigated the actual theory in any serious manner. Instead, they just believe that it must be true because good old Dawkins, Sam Harris and the lovely Neil deGrasse Tyson say so. In other words, the average atheist unquestionably submits to a bunch of popular authority figures without checking out for him or herself the evidential basis of the fairy tales they are being offered. Now, the reason why all of this is important is this. Had the blindly believing atheists actually read Darwin, they would know that he was adamantly clear about the fact that the theory of evolution has nothing to say about whether God exists or not. Let me repeat that. Darwin himself was very clear about the fact that the theory of evolution has nothing to do with the question of God. In fact, one of the many places in which this becomes evident is in the very last sentence of his book, where Darwin writes, There is grandeur in this view of life, with its several powers having been originally breathed by the Creator into a few forms or into one, and that, whilst this planet has gone circling on according to the fixed law of gravity, from so simple a beginning, endless forms most beautiful and most wonderful have been and are being evolved. Sounds poetic, right? Well, except for the fact that the atheist poetry lover might not be too impressed with the reference to the creator there. Sorry, man. And so where it gets really interesting is when Richard Dawkins, who is Darwin's most vicious advocate, says that Darwin has made it possible to be an intellectually fulfilled atheist. Now I'm of course happy for Dawkins and all of his followers that they feel the bliss of intellectual fulfillment atheism apparently bestows on them. But I'm sorry to tell you that citing Darwin's theory of evolution as the intellectual basis of your atheism makes as much sense as citing Sam Harris's book, Waking Up, for the reason why you're not perpetually asleep. Because neither is Harris's book about how to get out of bed in the morning, nor is Darwin's Origin of Species about disproving God. Therefore, even if Darwin's theory of evolution were established beyond any doubt, it would not logically follow that God does not exist. Therefore, my advice to Mr. Dawkins and the sheep who listen to his preposterous preaching would be to wake up from their delusion that Darwin gives intellectual backup for their atheist dreams. I mean, what a tragic irony that Darwin's most popular and most dogmatic apostle the world has ever seen ends up completely misrepresenting his own master. So why could both Darwin's theory of evolution and the existence of God be true at one and the same time? For the simple reason that these two refer to two different kinds of explanations. The first refers to an explanation in terms of natural law, while the second refers to an explanation in terms of personal agency. And these two types of explanations don't exclude each other by any stretch of the imagination. On the contrary, they go in perfect combination with one another. Let me give you an illustration why. Let's say I grow tomato plants on my balcony, which turn out to bear beautifully red tomatoes. As you visit, you ask, hey, how come you have such beautiful tomatoes? Now, I could give you the following answer. Because the tomato leaves are doing photosynthesis, thereby providing the plant with sugar, while the roots draw water, nitrogen and other nutrients from the ground, which made the plant blossom. The flower got pollinated and that's how the tomato grew. Now, this would be the explanation in terms of natural law. And it's 100% valid. But I could also say the following in response to your question. I bought a package of tomato seeds a couple of weeks ago and I planted them on my balcony. Then I watered them every day and removed the weeds. And when the plant started growing, I bound it to a stick so it wouldn't collapse. 
And I also just cleaned the tomatoes so they would look nice, you know? I love urban gardening. Now, this would be an explanation in terms of personal agency. Now, does the fact that there is a natural explanation for my tomatoes imply that the personal explanation is not valid? Or even more, that I don't exist? Of course not. Both natural law and my passion for gardening are 100% true. And to suggest that the first debunks the second is simply absurd. In fact, only those who appreciate both explanations get the full picture of why there are actually tomatoes on my balcony. The issue is this. There simply is no tension between explanations that concern natural law and explanations which concern the purpose of an agent. And it doesn't even matter whether this agent is human or divine. This is a matter of logic and the point stands whether the atheist likes it or not. And so, the same applies to evolution and God. The former is an explanation for the origin of species in terms of natural law, the latter in terms of personal agency. They go perfectly hand in hand, which is why anyone who thinks that evolution has debunked God is simply wrong. This is why ever since the origin of species came out, there have been Christians, Christian scientists, who embraced Darwinian evolution. Now. Am I saying that any of this proves that God exists? No, certainly not. Or that evolution is indeed a fact? No, of course not, far from it. But what I am saying is that anyone who cites evolution as an alleged argument against the existence of God needs to wake up from their Dawkins delusion. So if you've put your hopes in Darwin to prove your atheism, I've got bad news. Evolution doesn't disprove God. It never has. It never will. And so you have to dig somewhere else if you want to find intellectual fulfillment for your atheism. Good luck with that.